Hello guys and welcome back to Sunday Stock Talk. In this video, I want to go over some amazing plays that I have for this week as well as going into next week. Uh, in this video, I want to go in very in-depth. I got a lot of nice uh, tech uh, setups that I want to go over. Some very nice uh, call option plays. Uh, last week, we had some pretty nice uh, plays. You know, we had a play on Boeing, which I'm going to talk about and how we kept playing the bounce. And we had an amazing play on Bank of America. And then our loss um, was on Apple. So we had a loss on Apple. We're still holding this. I'm going to do a update on here. But Apple, uh, I mean, AMD, green play, Bank of America, green play, Boeing, green play. Okay, all of these were green plays except for Apple. And I'll be going over why Apple was a red play because it was, we had some very, very uh, bad news for Apple, which I want to go over. Airbnb shares are going to be great. So we're going to go over a lot in this video. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on. Make sure to leave a like if you guys enjoy content like this. Make sure to go to sundaystocktalk.com. You guys can get, you know, emails right into your email email inbox where you guys can just check up and see the weekly stock market setups for this week. Um, so let's get started with that. Now I want to get started with the economic calendar because the economic calendar is a concern. Um, especially this week we have Fed Chair Powell testifying on Thursday, March 7th. Whenever Fed Chair Powell speaks, it is very, very important, and it creates volatility. Um, he is also testifying on Wednesday. So this is going to be a volatile week. Okay, this is going to be a volatile week, and we always have news over technical analysis. And I'll be going over here a lot in this video, especially with Apple. You know, the technical analysis, the chart, it's going to look good. We're going to look great. A plus setup. But the news overlaps the technical analysis. So we got to be careful with that. The next week we have inflation numbers on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, inflation numbers aren't really a worry anymore. It's mostly just Fed Chair Powell speaking. Okay, That is huge. And the un unemployment numbers. Definitely a very volatile week. Um, you know, Be careful with your risk management. Uh, put in a lot lower um, than what you normally put. That is what I am doing. So let's get started with the SPY first. SPY looking very interesting. Like always, we are in that consolidation period again. We literally keep talking um, about this, you know, every YouTube video that we we make on, you know, we play this downtrend breakout, we break out, we consolidate, we break out, we consolidate. And right here is just another consolidation on the period. Uh, and especially today it was actually a nice play off the calls. So, you know, I completely forgot about this. I was pretty busy today, but this was a great area for calls. Okay, playing the bounce off the level of support is a great idea to play um, the bounce for spy. So we are bullish as long as if we hold 505. We're just going to trade sideways between these zones, depending upon what happens with these catalysts. And then if we break this support, you know, our next support is 5. Oh, one. So if we do have a red week, this is going to be a great area to play calls off of 501. And if we break this, then we have 493. So it depends upon, you know, where we close and what level we are holding. But these are the three levels that I have charted out 505, 501 and 493. And again, we are, you know, very nicely respecting um, these levels. I'm going to make a whole video on the EMA. But what I like to use is I like to use the 21 EMA as a very nice uh, bullish indicator to also buy um, off of. You know, this was our first original video on this channel. If you go to my oldest video, it was on the EMA. But the 21 EMA is going to be a very in, uh, good indicator to ride the market, especially in a bull market. When we are in a bull market, the two, uh, the 21 EMA is a very respectable level of support. Then we also have uh, the 50 EMA. Um, I'll probably make a whole another video on here. But 50 EMA is another uh, great one. But especially when we go into uh, bull markets, we do have pullbacks. And we, we, we got to know when to buy in uh, into that uh, pullback. So let's get this off the chart. QQQ. 
is the TAC ETF. I'll be talking a lot about TAC in this video, but uh, we can see that QQQ, really same thing, just trading sideways right here doesn't look uh, too good it's just trading sideways but i will be talking a lot about tech in this video now the first play and the first setup is on boeing now we played many many setups on boeing you know if i just go to i'll just go to my discord and kind of show you guys what's going on with boeing because we keep playing the bounce especially for the small account challenge we had a hundred percent gain and then we had a 58 percent uh gain i believe on the small account challenge so if i go to the discord right now link in the description um let's go to the 1000 to 5000 channel we had a nice 89 percent uh gain on boeing today and then yesterday we had a 103 percent so you know we keep buying the bounce off of boeing and we keep playing this bounce and the perfect entry is right at the level of support and then since we're playing weekly uh, contracts we're just taking in those you know 50 percent gains 100 percent gains because we got weekly call options we got to be in and out quick because the longer we hold the more theta is just going to kill our contracts so boeing was a solid solid play I'm still in some contracts on the Discord, and if it drops again, I want to buy in. And especially for next week, we're just getting tighter and tighter, and it's going to get a breakout soon, man. Boeing is right now my favorite stock because we just keep milking and we just keep playing the bounce. And this support is just so solid at $200. It is such an amazing support. And then not only that, you know, we already have multiple 100% gains on Boeing we can then also play if the market does run to the downside and we break this level of support we can play puts so we can also play puts if we close below on the daily time frame around you know $198 because this is a critical level of support but for now we are absolutely just milking and sniping um, calls off of the level of support for our Boeing and we are doing amazing the next setup that we have is on Microsoft. Microsoft and tech in general to me looks really, really good. Microsoft is trading sideways on this channel right now. We have the 397 support and then we have a 416 level of support. And previously we also had this setup, which we play. We played the support. We played the balance. You guys can search up um, on this channel. If you go to the channel, uh, we had a video on Microsoft right over here. It's been two months now for that Microsoft play. So simply just buying calls in at 397 and playing the bounce and having the stop loss close below 397. Very, very similar play to our play on AMD. Very, very similar play to our play on Shopify. And this consolidation pattern is such an amazing A plus setup right now. And that was the last, uh, you know, the latest video that I made so make sure to watch that video if you have not already playing the bounces off the level of support you know boeing another example where we're just playing off the level of support so for microsoft microsoft looks absolutely incredible 397 dollars calls a week two weeks out but simply just playing the bounce because again we have higher probability on playing the bounce and then just having that stop loss close blow it is all a probability game have a very uh, strict stop loss close below 397 for microsoft next we have tesla again tech looks really really good and especially if you snipe the bottom because you want to snipe the bottom for tech and then because that's going to be the perfect entry so tesla has the same setup like microsoft like amd um like shopify and like many many other uh, of the plays so tesla another great play we're taking a look at the r side definitely oversold we got killed on earnings um you know i had a bad play on tesla like a month out call uh on trying to play the breakout so again another lesson that i learned that uh, the probability is a lot better when we play the bounce instead of the breakout because we did get rejected for tesla so for tesla right here the prob probability is on our side we are already down so much you know what are the chances that uh we keep 
you know dropping since we are already in these lows so we could use that to our advantage because it is all a probability game so tesla calls are a little bit more expensive but i'm thinking around like two three weeks out just play the quick bounce you know not a month out just a bounce off even like a two percent on shares you know that's going to be like a 50 percent on options so just play a quick bounce even on the weekly call options for tesla looks amazing if i zoom out we have this downtrend a channel a breakout um and then we can we can also see that we had a previous consolidation phase so tesla is my you know number sec uh third play after uh, uh boeing microsoft and then i have tesla next we have google with a falling wedge Google looks absolutely amazing. Tech in general just looks amazing. You know, we had a massive, massive pullback. Um, and the reason that we had a pullback, I'm going to go over later in this video with Apple. But we can see that Google has this very nice falling wedge. Uh, a month out call options, two to three weeks out. Just play the bounce. You know, overall tech uh, looking good. And this is what we are taking a look at for Google, um, you know, play the bounce, price target 136, but another amazing, amazing play. So we had Bank of America. It broke out of the ascending triangle setup. We had a 42% on our small account challenge play, and I think 80% on our uh, swing trades play. Uh, but uh, Bank of America was such an amazing play, great play. And the cool thing about uh, Bank of America, it is it definitely has more room to go. So our price target is going to be $37. So if you're still holding Bank of America, $37 is going to be a very nice price target. Especially if I take a look at XL. Uh, XLF, which is the banking ETF. So this ETF, this stock has all the bank stocks combined into one. And we can see that XLF has a very nice ascend ascending triangle. So we might see a run up on banks in general, but Bank of America 37 price target, if we're still um, holding it, we got out for a very nice profit, but definitely has some more room to go. So we got to do a update on Apple. Am I going to play Apple again? And let's see what happens. So I did an average down on Apple. And let's talk about Apple right now. Because I really want to talk about Apple. Because this was supposed to be a A-plus setup. Now on Friday we had a convictions list uh, news. So we had like a downgrade uh, from a bank. I think it was Citigroup. And then on Monday we had a $2 billion lawsuit um, from EU. And then today we had another catalyst where Apple... Uh, the company sales are down 25% uh, in China. So this was caused by the catalyst. Like we can see that Apple stock, you know, gapped down, we gapped down. The chart was on point. Again, news over technical analysis. Overnight, we had news which just caused the drop for Apple. So what are we taking a look at now? Well, we're breaking literally every support. We broke 180. We broke 173. Now we are at 167. And I think this is going to be the perfect, perfect uh, entry to average down on. So on the Discord, I kept mentioning that I did not average down because the, the main play was the 180 level of support. But we broke that. So our next, because it's right now a falling you know it's a falling knife right now so the next price target is 167 this is going to be such an amazing amazing buy if we take a look at the weekly time frame apple is now pretty much just trading between these two zones so this is going to be a perfect perfect entry for apple off of this level of support of 167 if we take a look at the rsi the rsi has never been this low for apple so we just need one more drop probably get some contracts into tomorrow then if it drops more average down but 167 is going to be the perfect perfect entry to average down on a month out on apple contracts so i was down around 80 percent on apple contracts i'm already down so much to the point where i'm like i'm just going to average down a month out and then play the bounce off of here but apple looks good at 167 and this is going to be kind of like the revenge trade that we make on apple so this looks really nice for apple airbnb okay shares we talked about it last week it was on sunday stock talk 
pretty much, you know, if you got in shares, very nice. I got in some shares around 150, but it's just going to be a continuation play to the upside, just a shares play. You know, stop loss below $150, close on the weekly and daily time frame. And then last, we got Bitcoin. As you guys know, we are very, very bullish on Bitcoin. We got many, many people loaded up on Bitcoin. You know, this was our... Um, one of our uh, small account challenge plays, which is at around $35,000 right now. Amazing, amazing play. Long term, we're going to be looking very good on Bitcoin. But again, this is my biggest go-to um, play, which is Bitcoin long term. Because long term, you know, we're talking about 200000 to even 700000 you know, as you guys know, in the Discord, in the premium section. So overall, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments what stocks you guys are watching for this week.